We're back on ABC 24 this week. I'm joined by Otis Sanford and Brad Broders, both with ABC 24. Let's talk about the TVA, shall we? Um, mm -hmm. They got kind of scolded by city council, by several members of the city council, uh, for issuing this economic report. They paid the chamber uh, $75,000 to issue this report uh, and talk about the economic impact the TVA has uh, here in the Memphis metro area economy. And, and in fact, that report concluded that uh, the TVA supports 9,000 jobs, uh, $741 million in labor income, $1.8 billion in sales to businesses, and bottom line, about a billion dollars uh, to Shelby County's uh, gross domestic product or, or overall economy. And when it went before the council, they, they smelled the politics of this, <laughs> as a council member should be able to do, mm -hmm. and that is, well, why on earth would they issue this, eco this glowing economic report about what the TVA does for Memphis if it wasn't for the fact that we're coming close to this decision that we're waiting from MLGW and City Council uh, as to whether it's time to leave the TVA and Memphis and MLGW get the electricity from somewhere else. Uh, I'm going to, several, several council members had comments, but I'm going to quote uh, council member J.B. Smiley Jr. first. He said, uh, every time, he's talking to the uh, executives with TVA, every time you come before this body, this body is going to assume it's some sort of lobbying being done so we can make a decision in your favor when it comes to the power supply contract. At some point in time, TVA will stop treating us like a role player and start treating us like John Morant. <laughs> Point there, we are TVA's number one customer. Exactly. Ten percent of the business that uh, the TVA gets comes from uh, Memphis and Shelby County ratepayers. So, um, you know, I think the uh, the, the re reaction from the city council is pretty telling. What is your first? Oh, no question about it, Richard. Uh, and it wasn't just J.B. Smiley, and that was a great quote that uh, he gave <laughs> us about John Morant. Uh, but it was uh, it was very bipartisan beating up on the TVA here. Uh, you had, uh, uh, I think, you had Chase Carlisle. Uh, involved in this. You had uh, Cheyenne uh, Johnson. Uh, they were all critical. Uh, Dr. Jeff Warren. Mm -hmm. They were all critical of, of this. I think a lot of them were, were channeling Janet Jackson here. What have you done for me lately? You're coming <laughs> up with all of these old things, uh, but you're not talking about what you plan to do for us uh, in the future. And so, yes, that, that was just one example of how they got beat up. I believe it really was a PR move uh, on their part. Uh, Patrice uh, Patrice Robinson took a little of the blame because she says she asked for this report and so she was saying don't blame uh, the TVA, blame me if you want to. But yeah, it was all about uh, positioning themselves for a favorable uh, response on keeping uh, the MLGW agreement. Of course, Patrice Robinson is an MLGW retiree, exactly. collects an MLGW pension, et cetera, exactly. et cetera. Exactly. Um, so let's talk about uh, the chamber too, Brad, because they have a little bit of egg on their face. Uh, they issued the report. Uh, of course, they got paid handsomely for it, uh, and they have claimed since day one, we've been talking about this, this issue of whether the MLGW should leave TVA for years, four years now. Uh, they claim we are, we are neutral on this, we're not taking a position. If that's the case, um, even though they denied it emphatically, why issue this report now? Yeah. And that's what a lot of the city council members from uh, all sides of the political spectrum are asking very pointedly earlier this week. And, you know, with all due respect to the Greater Memphis Chamber, they do a lot of great things for this community. It is a little difficult for the city council to in not interpret that they're taking sides when they do this glowing report, but say we're not taking a side. Uh, you know, that's, you know, it, they, and the city council members, like Otis said, they were wondering, where's the details of the jobs that you all are going to guarantee in the future not all the things that have had happened before what what's going to be in the future for investment of you know, new jobs etc so it's going to be interesting to see uh how that's taken as you know this ongoing uh, potential change in the power supply continues and then Otis, uh, it wasn't just that issue this week. We had uh, revelations that uh, through some uh, public records requests that mm -hmm. the TVA has been sitting back on some information uh, regarding that coal ash, uh, toxic coal ash uh, pile that has to be removed and moved somewhere. And mm -hmm. now we learned it's a landfill in South Memphis is where they want to put it. And there's just no great resolution to how they've, number one, how they decided where they're going to put it, uh, uh, the safety of it, what it may or may not do to our water supply. Right. Lots of unanswered questions. And, and it just really appeared, at least to these environmental groups, that raised the concerns uh, that TVA has been less than forthcoming there. No question about it, Richard. And, and TVA did not answer this issue 
very well at all. They gave some really blanket, bland statement. Um, but this is a, 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 a bad issue for them from a PR perspective. What we're talking about here, uh, according to the environmental activists and the environmental groups that have been involved in this, we're talking about trucking this toxic coal ash uh, from this uh, plant uh, down in, in southwest Memphis uh, through the city, mostly through African-American neighborhoods, out to uh, the South Shelby uh, landfill. Uh, it's out on Malone Road somewhere out there east of the airport. It's going to be going through these African-American neighborhoods. And they say that this is going to be going on 24 hours a day, seven days a week for 10 years. Mm. Uh, I mean, that, you know, and, and, and again, we're talking about toxic material here uh, and they did not let the community know about this until six months after they had made the decision it's not a good look uh, and 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 uh, Jeff Warren I mentioned him earlier with the City Council he beat him up on that again on last week um, and so yes I think the TVA it is a bad it was a bad week for them uh, on both of these areas and they did not respond to either one of them very effectively yeah and then there's one more Brad and that's this issue of uh, releasing the salaries of employees who work for the TVA. Uh, the complaint there, the TVA likes to be uh, uh, a private or a public entity until it doesn't like to be a private <laughs> entity <laughs> yeah. and didn't want to release that information, even though it has in the past and nothing's changed since the last time they did it. Now all of a sudden, uh, the, the salary information is private. Yeah, I mean, most, most uh, cities and counties across the country, you can just go online and type in a city's county the government database and every salary is listed, whether it's police, firefighters, government employees, et cetera. Yeah, and, and Otis's point, I mean, I really believe that uh, the lack of details really uh, irked a lot of city council members, namely Dr. Jeff Warren. I mean, this is this is just the remnants of this. You can't help but compare it to the Bahalia pipeline, which would have potentially affected a lot of similar areas, mm -hmm. a lot of predominantly black neighborhoods in Memphis. Coming off the heels of that, Dr. Warren is essentially saying, you all aren't considering any other options. This is the only choice. You guys don't have any details of other plan B or C. So I think that's going to continue um, to hound the TVA as they're continuing to debate what to do with that coal ash. And, and to that point, uh, I really hope when uh, Brad brings up the Bahia pipeline issue, I really hope that the state legislature does not get involved in this the way they got involved in the pipeline issue. Remember, they passed a bill that said that local governments could not uh, pass ordinances or regulations to regulate uh, pipelines or where pipelines should go. I really hope that that's not going to be the case here. Uh, but with this legislature, you never know. Um, but I, this is, a, again, this is a bad issue for TVA they have not explained themselves very well and the fact that they did keep this information secret for six months uh, does not speak well for them at all well thank you for that perfect uh, segue <laughs> to our next segment because we are going to talk about local control local issues and when or, or not the uh, state government should be getting involved because they seem to have a, a growing tendency to get involved and there were a couple more examples uh, developments in that particular situation coming up we'll talk about it right after this <laughs> 